when you come to the Jackson Park Highlands, you really have a sense of traveling back in time. You go back to an era when people were building grand homes in the city. Each one has an architectural personality all its own. Most of that is still intact as you come through the neighborhood. And it's especially true of this home we're going to visit today. There is so much intact from this house from the time it was built in the 19 teens. That starts with the great wood tracery around the ceiling and the crown moldings comes down past this phenomenal fireplace. Look at the heft of that. And then it's flanked by these bookcases with the stained glass. This is a wonderful period piece. The reason so much of this is still here is that since the house was built sometime in the teens, it's had two multi-decade owners and then in between one very short time owner. So really two long-term owners, nobody ever messed with anything. That's why this room looks as wonderful as it does. And the dining room with its great paneling and more of those leaded glass windows looks so great. The library behind it, more very rich paneling, all intact. The one thing that has been changed is next to the dining room, there's a small porch. It was originally open. It's been enclosed. You can imagine before the days of air conditioning, you'd have wanted that to make cross ventilation through the house. That would also be the reason that there are these two pairs of French doors on the sides of the living room that open out onto the porch. Nice, wonderful enclosed porch, still screened. And from there, what you do is commune with this very large lot. This house is on the equivalent of six city lots. We're still in the city, but we're on a very large piece of land. The kitchen was updated at some point, but decades ago. And take a look at this. This is where the past catches up to the present. You have this wonderful old vintage stainless steel drain board and a brand new stainless dishwasher. Stainless is back, but it's already here in this house. You've got this blue tile and the kitchen is laid out essentially in three rooms. There are two pantry areas and this main room. You might be doing some reconfiguration for today's lifestyle. One thing you might do here is create a small sitting area here in the kitchen because, again, we're in a vintage house. The one thing you're missing is the family room being next to the kitchen. Because of the age of the house, the family room is in the basement, but it's not second rate. It's finished nearly to the quality level of the rooms on the main floor. That starts with this nice brick fireplace flanked by two built-in wood benches. Overhead, there are wood beams, and all around, there's a wood chair rail. But the most important detail here that really brings this below-ground room up to the level of the main house is the windows. On both sides, the far side and flanking the fireplace here, there are windows with beautiful stained glass insets. These nice panels depicting sailboats and castles really make these the nicest windows in the house, nicer than the windows on the main floor or the second floor where the bedrooms are. Now that's not to suggest that the windows on the upper two floors are any slouches. Here in the master bedroom, you've got two walls of windows and you can see going on here something that one of the sellers mentioned to me. Because you're on a big lot with a lot of trees, he pointed out, you don't see any other houses here in this city neighborhood. We're in the master bedroom. It's nearly the size of the living room. There are four bedrooms in all on this floor and two baths. Everything is in a relatively vintage condition, but updated with what you need, air conditioning, new plumbing fixtures. But while updating the baths, they paid respect by keeping two really cool bathtubs. The third floor, originally servants' quarters, has four or five rooms, full-size ceilings, nice windows. You can sort of count that as expansion space. And on top of that, you also have a coach house where the second floor is living quarters. So there's an awful lot of room that you can use to reconfigure and create whatever spaces are missing from this vintage home. The good news is, because all of those are outside the reach of the original vintage details, you're not going to have to mess with any of the great intact character of the home when you update.